I used to think you were either born a leader or you are, mm. um, and I don't think that's true anymore. The opinion of your peers means more mm, than the opinion of anyone else, and, and they're the lads you, you take in the field with them. But yeah, he just rang me. He says, "Look, Cruz. He says um, this is one of the toughest calls I've had to make. I feel like you've you've been unlucky not to get in." Strange time because obviously to lose a parent that was so in love like with me mm. and he took me everywhere, did everything with him. I was his first boy, uh, you know, first born. Whereas my mum, she said, "There's no way you're using your dad's name to disgrace uh, this family and, and let me let you get away with it." Makes it very clear that um, professional sport is a ruthless mm. game to be in. From Huddersfield, you're there for seven years. And then the Leeds Rhinos come in for you. How does that, obviously you spoke about the transfer window a little bit. How does that sort of work? What was the sort of pull from Leeds Rhinos and what, how did they get in touch? Um, well, Smiling here. What yeah, the, <laughs> there's, there's a story, uh, isn't yeah. there? Yeah, uh, <laughs> my mum was a croupier uh, in a, on a cruise ship. Okay. Uh, that's where I got my name. It was mad playing in that lockdown because week in, week out, like the commentators... They used to play sound of a crowd for the spectators, yeah. but we want we wouldn't hear that. So oh. we could hear them shouting out right. names and, and commentating on the game. We could hear, oh, he's dropped, he's, he's dropped it again. He's having a <laughs> shocker. Jesus Christ. We're back. Um, back on the podcast, the first one of 2023, as always, and joined with my best pal, Mr. Louis Rafter. Louis, how are you? Very good, very good, thank you. How are you? Good, yeah, all good, mate. Um, we haven't seen, actually, we had, when was the last time we saw each other? This week sometime? New Year's. Nah, it was after that, wasn't it? Nah, I haven't seen you since. Have you not? Been a very uh, welcomed break. <laughs> yeah, it has been, yeah. Christmas, New Year's, obviously, last time we did a podcast as well. Uh, how was your Christmas? Brilliant. I had uh, Taku around. You did have Taku around, yeah. Yeah, so my mum prefers him to me. She said, that, she said that you look like him. Yeah, she did. Uh, is she aware he's Japanese? On a, yeah, probably not. Well, on I arrival, she like stroked his chin. <laughs> and, what? And said, oh, you look like Louis. <laughs> <laughs> what did Taku say? She just laughed at him. You know what he's like? Yeah. He just laughed at yeah, I bet it's it. because Taku's got a bit of a goatee as well, hasn't yeah. he? So yeah. that'll be the only yeah. similarity. He's yeah. also got jet black hair. Looks yeah. in, it does look nothing like that. Let's just yeah. make that very clear. Yeah. Um, New Year as well. Obviously, we were together yeah. for New Year. Yeah, it was good night, wasn't it? Well, it was. It was a bit of a... The curry house was a bit of a shit it show, was wasn't chaos. it? We went for a, uh, a curry. What's it called? A John Rummy? Is that is that Ruby it? Murray? <laughs> John Murray. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know Johnny caught your eye with slag, don't yeah. you? Know? <laughs> and Johnny laughing in the background as well. Thanks, Johnny. Um, yeah, went for a uh, John Murray. Um, a Ruby <laughs> Murray. <laughs> <laughs> and it was absolute, yeah, it was chaos, wasn't it? Yeah, so there was 20 of us and he booked a table for about three people, it did didn't yeah. he? Well, there's 20 of us and he, booked, he had a table for 12. How he got that wrong, I don't know, but he, he was very apologetic, gave yeah. him a few free beers. Yeah, um, which I didn't know about. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm there paying 25 quid, he only had a breadstick. Did you? <laughs> yeah. I didn't pay 25 quid, I know you but to be fair, I only had a starter. Oh, and plus, um, the the beers that he gave, we were. I was pissed by that time. I'm not gonna lie. I yeah. was. That's why I didn't get a curry. I think everyone was there. Yeah, I was. Well, well on you the nearly way. had a heart attack, didn't you? Yeah, my, my chest were killing. I think it was a curry. <laughs> I turned to you and you were like, ah. I was like, yeah, what's all yeah? You were like, thanks for caring, Jack. <laughs> I stood outside for five yeah, minutes. You did, you had to take a breather. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was chaos. And then after the curry, we went to Manhattan in Headingley. Yeah. Um, which was, our which was, yeah, it was sick section, actually, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, we had a little section co uh, section cautioned off. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Um, cautioned off, cornered, whatever. Um, <laughs> for all of us, and then to be fair, a few more turned up. There's probably about thirty, forty of us yeah, in the end, wasn't yeah. there? Um, but it, it was it was sick actually, and yeah. and we were flying there. I was battered, yeah. and then I got kicked out for dancing on the stool. On yeah, uh, do you know? About, oh yeah, you were there, weren't you? Yeah, <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, Johnny, uh, yeah, Johnny, yeah, yeah. So, so he, did you pay for that? Yeah, he was giving it big and said, "Okay, oh, bounce to twenty quid." So oh, no, I did. No, I didn't. I was telling. I was telling everyone else that you paid fifty quid, and it <laughs> won. It was twenty quid. They had charged. You charged. Yeah. Well, what happened was we come out. I wasn't even that pissed. I was just dancing on the chair, and he'd already told me not to do it. But then everyone had done it, so I was like, yeah. I'm going to do it. I think <laughs> once he says it, it once, <laughs> I look over me. I march. He told me, I'm like, oh, shit Here on we it. Go again. Yeah. <laughs> um, and he was like, right, you out. I was like, oh fella, please. I was like, I'm, re I'm really sorry. Just let me say it with my yeah. friends. Honestly, I was like, fella, I'm, I'm not, I'm not even that pissed. And he knew I wasn't that pissed. And he went. That's why I'm not putting you on pub watch. 
I was like, you busy oh, wanker. Come off it. Who the fuck's putting someone on pub oh, for dancing on a stool? Make that happen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and then the other bouncer that he was with, we were like, me and Johnny were stood at the door trying to get our way back in that chatting waffle. <laughs> no, yeah. Unlike you two. Yeah, <laughs> honestly. And then the other bouncer went, just chuck us 20 quid and I'll let you back in. <laughs> and you went, Did all right, Sam. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, ah, yes. <laughs> That's it. Yes. So yeah, so um, he let us back in. And then I swear I seen him looking for me. The other bouncer, the other busy one. And I was stood at the bar did he like, not know about the 20 Well, quid? he must have told him. He said, I let him back in for 20 quid. And he must have been like, nah, fuck that. But if he kicked me out, I'd have been like, well, can I, can I please have my money back? <laughs> yeah. I'd like, me. A, <laughs> like a refund, please. Um, but yeah, that, and then what did we go after that? Oh, we went to an afters. Um, and I was there till 8 a.m. with Johnny, actually. <laughs> which That's is, awful. yeah, it was terrible. It was terrible. It got to the stage where we went to the afters. We were having a mint time. Uh, what time did we leave? Seven? No, I think we got left at like six. Six. Oh, so we left at half six, whatever, and then we went back to one of the lads' house, um, Luke's, and then he started putting on roll safe and that, and I was like, yeah. Let's call it And then I was walking home through Headley thinking, why am I still awake it, at this hour? Were the birds singing, was it light? Yeah, but oh, yeah, proper. Yeah, proper awful. light. I thought you meant the birds that we were with. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, uh, I think they were singing. It was New Year. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that was, our, that was our New Year. My Christmas. What did I do my Christmas? Pretty quiet, to be fair. Went home for like... Ate a lot? Yeah, bad, actually. And I was trying not to, because at work, we've got a bet on, haven't we, Johnny? Um, yeah, I've heard about yeah, this. Yeah, so who can be in best shape in 12 weeks. So that's put me Who's back involved in Is Finn involved? F- no, Sorry, Finn's what? judging. Me, Johnny, Harry. Oh, God, it's an um, easy way out there, isn't it? Yeah, innit, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to do any exercise. Um, <laughs> I've got feelings too, you know. <laughs> hey, they pushed in. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so but I went over two days, nothing special. Came back, spent some time with the family, and then was back in Leeds. Went home for mum's birthday again, and then that, that was pretty much it. That was the mm. festive period for us back at work now. So, yeah, back to um, it. Back to the grind. Dry jam. That, yeah. Oh, yeah. In. Well, I'm doing monk mode. You what? are, right? Yeah. yeah. So, monk mode, I've got to meditate, so, which I did this morning, by the way. See you it's not even that. It's not. It, literally, I sit there. Do you give it all that? No. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 I don't know. It hurts when I cross my legs. <laughs> so, like, I have to change positions. So, I'm constantly changing positions. It's just breathing through your nose and like your mouth playing music, but it's really boring. Trying to get comfy? It, no, it's just boring. Like, you just sat there, like, with your eyes closed, going, How long do you do it for? 10 minutes. How long do you Oh, it's a long 10 <laughs> minutes as well. But then it gets to like the sixth minute, and you're like, Oh, it's quite nice for about a minute and then you're out of it and you think this is boring <laughs> yeah. um, so I'm doing that are you in Not, the dark by the way like nah it depends depends if I'm in bed when I do it because sometimes I lay down nah just well, the other day I was knackered and I had to do it before I went to bed and I had my eye mask on doing it <laughs> <laughs> so I was double blind <laughs> like Stevie Wonder on steroids um, so <laughs> that's an analogy I've never heard before <laughs> Yeah. Um, so yeah. So there's that. Not drinking. Um, I've got to do exercise thirty minutes a day, which is fine because gym. Um, and then um, a couple of other things, which I won't mention on the podcast. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't think I should mention that. Um, but yeah. So like I say, back on the grind. That brings us sort of onto this episode. Um, obviously, we're back in uh, the the boxing gym. Shout out Craig. Shout out Firefight again. As always, we really appreciate being here. Um, which obviously means we've got a guest coming on. So it's today's exciting. yeah <laughs> makes change from chatting shit with you <laughs> yeah. next so, to a fish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, today's guest is uh, Leeds Rhino Rugby League captain. We've got Cruz Lemming Leeming. We've had this. Discussion. We think it's Leeming. We'll ask him when he gets here. Yeah. Um, he, like I say, he should lead... be able to confirm. That. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like I say, he's Leeds Rhino's captain. Played at Wembley. Um, grew. I think he's from Swaziland. It used to be called Swaziland. Don't know what it's called now. Um, came over here when he was young. Obviously, talk about how he got into into rugby. How he became professional. How the academy ranks work. I think me and Rafter are very sort of rugby novices yeah. um football's we, our sport yeah we don't know a lot on rugby so but we're trying to entertain everyone yeah here. so first of all we apologize if we do anything daft for any rugby fans that are watching yeah. Cruz will probably feel like he's Can talking you pick the ball up in the first <laughs> yeah. question Cruz probably talk like he's uh, think he's talking to children explaining it yeah. but um i'm sure it'll be good chat nonetheless so um next time you see us Cruz will be here and 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 let's crack it on vamos Cruz, how are you, mate? Good to see you. Thank you for coming on. No, not a problem. Thanks for having me. No, no worries, mate. Um, first question I want to ask you, because we were discussing this just before. Oh, yeah. Is it leeming or lemming? Leeming. 
Uh, you I were right. Leaving. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, I, yeah. I think I was watching a YouTube video of you playing, um, and I swear a commentator said lemon, and I was like, mm, "Are you sure, fella?" Yeah. And then you said it's spelled lemon, so it must be lemon. But yeah, um, yeah I, I just didn't want to start calling you the wrong <laughs> name straight away. As you no, 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 it's it's start, it? I have had that little bit cut growing up through school, teachers getting it wrong. Um, but yeah, it's Lehman. To be yeah. fair, Cruz is a sick name. Yeah, it? isn't it? It's well, hard. Tom Cruise, that's all <laughs> yeah. I'd be walking around school thinking, yeah, yeah. I'm fucking Cruz. I'm with a K, I'm with a K though, me. Yeah, 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 you are, yeah, true. And it's first name, not a surname. Yeah. It's a bit of a different one. Right, so first off, mate, um, every single guest that we get on, we do a little bit of an icebreaker. So we've got a pot here um, with some questions on. We call it like a potluck section. Um, so it's going to have a question on there. Um, like I say, just to break the ice, sort of a weird one. Pull it out, pick a question. Um, got two there. That's just one. Long one. In their primes, Love Island or Big Brother? Yeah. That's a weird one, that. Yeah. Who wrote these? <laughs> yeah, one of our mates wrote and we didn't know where they were. Um, I grew up watching um, Big Brother. Uh, you know, my parents used to watch it, so I, I, I do know Big Brother and there's been some good contestants on there, but I'd have to probably say Love Island because yeah, it's, elite, it, it? It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's going mental. Uh, yeah. Yeah, this moment in time, the people that are going on there, they're coming out and multi multi millionaires. So it's a joke in it. It's, Although Big it, Brother, what a TV yeah. show! Like, I used to watch it. Mom, I used to watch it with my mum, but I'd have to watch it. Do you remember when it was on in the day? Because at night time they'd swear in it, and yeah, then yeah. in the daytime, my mum would record it in the daytime so I could then watch it back after school because they'd blur out all the swearing. But Big Brother was absolute chaos. Yeah, um, it's, I swear a new series is coming out actually. Yeah, I think it um, is, isn't it? But some of those, like that time when someone said that they thought David had died. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah, yeah, And he, uh, she meant David Bowie, who was her ex-husband. <laughs> and that David was in bed asleep and someone ran through that. <laughs> you're dead, <laughs> David! <laughs> and it was like, what are you on about? But yeah, Love Island. <laughs> You'll be on that soon, won't you? Mm. Good luck <laughs> I, I wouldn't mind. Yeah, I, I, I play rugby though, don't I? So yeah, they, they won't give me the time off. Uh, it? Although Jack's just been on it, hasn't he? So, yeah. Um, who was he playing for? Uh, he was playing for Castleford. He was, oh, yeah, yeah, he was, yeah. Uh, but I, th- he, I don't he, think I'd get away with it, I'll be honest. Did he get released just before he, he went on? Or was it because he was going on? I'm, I don't know. No, I he think. went back to Castleford. Yeah, he went yeah. back. I think Is he, he playing again? I think, no, I think he sacked it off now. Is he? Um, but yeah, he, he, they granted him a release. Yeah. Uh, but I don't think I'd get away with it. Because there was a footballer. Well, I say a footballer. Is it Halifax? Yeah, it was. Was it Mark? Was his name Marcus his or something name. like that? Yeah. 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 But, yeah. but but what league? Castleford, same league as you? Is that how it works? Yeah, yeah. Is it? The, the rivals was the Leeds Rhinos. The big rivalry between uh, Leeds Rhinos and Castleford. Um, I didn't realise how big it was actually until I played in a game. And um, yeah, the intensity goes up a little bit. Does it goes it? up a level against them. Um, because they're so, so close to each other. Yeah, such a local derby, that yeah, is. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it's, there's, some, there's been some good good games, and obviously they've played them in a grand final as well. Leeds beat them in that grand final. Um, that was massive. Yeah. So at Wembley? It were at um, Old Trafford. Oh, right, okay. Um, so, yeah, there's um, there's some history between the two yeah, teams. Yeah, definitely. Uh, we said before, me and Rafter, are, are, I'm not going to lie, we're pretty much rugby novices, aren't yeah, we? Yeah. We're, we're football. Um, but we are obviously intrigued to learn uh, <laughs> a bit this, more. Yeah. Yeah. We said, uh, you were saying before, joking, can you pick up the ball? <laughs> um, so we, we, we don't know a lot, but we've tried to learn. Yeah, we've done our research. So we? We'll, see, we'll see how we get on. If we say something that's completely daft. No, don't. There's no one there. No, Feel free to walk out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I said before, if there's anyone watching and they get really offended by us saying something ridiculous, um, then uh, yeah, we apologise. But um, so obviously, you, how, how old were you when you first started sort of playing rugby and how did you get into it? Who were the person that brought you into it? Well, there's a bit of a story about this, um, the way I got into it. Uh, I was, I'm a big golfer. I play golf now. love my golf. Oh, uh, love watching it. Love playing it. Um, I don't play it in the winter. Uh that's when my clubs go away. Mm. I'll probably play snooker, a little bit of darts. Darts have been fantastic. Yeah. Watch a bit yeah. of darts. It's been mental. That nine dart the other yeah. day. Yeah, it's been great. But yeah, um, so yeah, through the summer I play golf and it's just, it's a really good release for me um, alongside playing rugby, you know, for, for that four hours when I'm playing golf, all I'm thinking about is my next shot and that's a little escape for me to go there and like I say, for that four hours I can just escape the pressures that come with be, being a mm. professional um, sports person and, you know, thinking about the next game because it can get overwhelming and yeah. it's um, it, it takes over your life, which it should do and I, I love it and I'm blessed to be able to play the sport, but it does, it takes over your life um, and that's the, like that little release, like my little um, happy place to get away from that. Um, so yeah, I played golf. I've played golf all, all my life. That's um, My granddad played 
played golf. He was the one who taught me when I was young. Um, from What's the, your handicap? You got a handicap? Two. I'm off two. Fuck you. That's good, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was hoping you were going to say, I, I play off like 22 or something. Yeah, yeah. I was hoping you were going to say, well, about when like you retire from rugby, that's something you can, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. can do. That's not a bad retirement I'd, sport. I'd, I'd love to do it. I'd love to do it. Either that or caddy, caddy for somebody. Yeah. A couple of my uh, mates are professional golfers. Um, they travel the world, so I'd, I'd, I'd love to get a gig caddy. Yeah. For them do you play with them as well then? Yeah, that's yeah. who I play with. Um, right. Nick Marsh is called, he's, he's on uh, the Euro Pro Tour. Um, and he's taught me loads, you mm. know, and that's who's yeah. got me down, really. Uh, playing with better players always helps. You ever beat him? No, I've took some money off him, but oh, I've yeah. never beat him off scratch. Mm. Uh, he's ridiculous. Bet, he's, yeah. he's, he's, there's different levels to that game. We've said, haven't we, before, is the hardest sport. Oh, to yeah, play. We, yeah we th- I think it is the hardest sport to master in the world. Like, so, so to be fair, I've, I've had this conversation with a few mates well. Snooker's hard. Snooker's really hard. Funny enough, you said you play that a little bit. But golf is... It, it, it's just ridiculous. I love watching it as well. I, I, like I say, I play it a little bit, not anywhere near to your level. I play it with my mates when four yeah. hours to yourself, like in you garden. say, it's <laughs> such an escape. Yeah, smashing windows, but yeah. it's such an escape. Um, and it is, it's so much fun, like when the Masters is on and stuff like that. It's good, isn't it? Especially Everyone when you've got Sky Bet, we're all betting and yeah, like yeah. watching and then watching it. So it's chaos. But yeah, no, I, I love golf. And I'm, to be fair, I'm surprised you said that. I don't know. Is that quite common for rugby players? I know it's a football sport as well. I, but I, I feel like through lockdown, um, they did it very clever golf because they kept it open, didn't they? When mm. all sports were were shutting down, and I think they had a, the massive boom. Loads of players that you know I'd grown up with that had never touched um, a golf club in their life started picking up golf clubs, started going down to range hitting balls because that's all you could do through that lockdown period for 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 an amount of time. So I think they were a boom, and mm. a lot of, a lot of lads are playing it now, and it's it's good once you. They, there were a stigma around golf and, you know, oh, you've got to be posh or whatever to play it. And they, they didn't see it as, you know, especially our lads, they mm. like the ferocious, the hitting, you know. Yeah. Um, it's a bit fast of a bug, pace. I think, God. Like, if I start playing it, I'll love it for like oh, you three weeks and I'll just sack it off. Yeah, like so it, yeah. So yeah, it's, then I'll have another round I'll be like, oh, I love so this. So addictive. It, yeah, it is. <laughs> you, you, you're always... You're one shot away from packing in or one shot yeah. away from, from buying a new set of clubs. Do you know what yeah. I mean? But then you always hit that. We have a terrible yeah. round and then you hit a one shot. This is yeah. why it's I play seven yeah. 150 yards straight down the middle of the fairway and you think, okay, I'm good here. Yeah. Yeah. And then you hit a wedge to go onto the green, it goes out of bounds. <laughs> Back class. to square one. Exactly, it just brings you into it. Well, yeah, that's it. And um, So, yeah, the, the way, we uh, went off the tangent a little bit there, but the way I got into rugby was I, were, I used to practice my golf on the um, rugby field. Okay. And I used to take divots out of, out of the floor, obviously practicing. Um, and the groundsman come to me one day and he says, "You can't, can't keep it in uh, balls off <laughs> off this turf, mate." He says, uh, "You're gonna ruin, you're gonna ruin the pitch." And I says, "Come on, I says, I'm, you know, I'm 10, 10, 11 year old." I says, uh, "This is what this is how I practice. I'm gonna be a professional golfer." Um, and he says, "Right, I'll do your deal." I says, "All right, go for it." He says, um, "You come down and sign for Siddle. It was Siddle's rugby pitch. You come down and sign for Siddle and sign on and play a couple of games. You can rip up as much turf as you want." I says, all right, no problem. I come down, I played, um, signed on. I think I was 11 year old, 10, 11 year old, signed on down at Siddle. Um, played, loved it, put my golf clubs away. Uh, didn't play then for another six, seven years and just concentrated on rugby. And so, so when you were young, was that the plan to go and be a pro golfer? Or I don't think I ever, w- when I were asked, um, being young, I wanted to be an actor. Did you? I loved acting. Yeah. Um, I were always acting go around, you know, always <laughs> class clown. Um, and try to have a laugh, uh, cheeky, but I got on with everyone, you know, and I, I, I liked, I, I don't know why, I just plucked out uh, acting, I love drama, coming yeah. through secondary school, love drama, and it wasn't until 15, 16, um, that I thought I could make a career out of rugby, I was just playing it alongside, you know, being with my mates at school, g- mm. got me uh, leaving lessons a little bit earlier, so I loved that bit of it. Yeah. Feeling like the big dog walking. Yeah. I'll see you later, fellas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've Thank got, you. A, I've got a game. Yeah, I've got a game. <laughs> Sorry, I've got to go. Um, so yeah, I loved that bit. Um, I loved being around the lads, having a laugh and a crack with the lads, um, and the trips that we got to go on. We, I, I played for a really successful um, school rugby team in Brooksbank, and we won the national cup three years on bounce. So we went down to Wembley. Um, we watched the we watched the Challenge Cup final for three years on bounce. That were like the the so prize. Um, we got to parade the the uh, the trophy that we'd won, the National Cup trophy, around at half time. Ah. So it were it was such a good you know trip to be involved mm. in, and uh, I loved it. And still though, then I'm playing for fun. You know, I, I was uh, 13, 14, 15, 16 at school playing for fun. I had a good good team, good set of lads, um, and then it wasn't till I was sixteen. I'd even thought about playing it professionally. I was just, you know, going through the motions with it. Um, and then 
I went I went and signed at um, at Warrington. Uh, Warrington signed me and started paying me a little bit of money, and I thought. All right, all right, yeah, yeah, I, yeah I, I, and I was just loving, I was loving what I was doing, you know, the life of, of of playing rugby, not having to, not having to um, work. I've, I've, you know, I've never worked a day in my mm. life. I've just played rugby. Uh, I thought this is brilliant. Um, so yeah, and then I got, I, I, I signed up Warrington. I did my shoulder playing for England. I got picked for the rep team and did my shoulder playing for England. And then at the end of that, um, Warrington let me go. Uh, I didn't play any games for him. So, but I thought. I'd played for England and I, I was going into that meeting thinking there's no there's no way that Warrington can drop me here mm. because I've played for England. I, you know, it means I'm, I'm the best nine, young mm. young nine playing in my position in the country. I've been selected to represent my country. I've injured myself. Um, you know, it's, it's out of my control. Obviously, I've got a bright future in the game if, I, if I'm getting, getting picked for rep mm. sides. Went into the meeting, he says, oh, there's nothing here for you. And I was like, wow. He shocked me that, and I was a bit like, "Wow, I, I can't believe I've not been um, signed." And it, it was never a thought of mine. Like, like, like I'm explaining, I thought that's I was definitely going to get signed. So then I've gone from how old were you then? Sorry, how I was 16, right? Uh, 15, going 16. Uh, so then I've gone from looking at like who's in the first team at Warrington, who mm. I've got to be chasing down, who, who, what spot I'm going to be taking, to then me not having a club and me going back to I nearly signed for Halifax as like because the. Obviously, Halifax is a league below uh, Warrington and okay. the Super League. They play in the Championship. But the way they sold it to me, obviously, you, it's like Premier League in football. You never want to leave the Premier League mm. to go, you know. And if you want to, if you can stay in like Arsenal system or Man United system, it's better because there's more eyes on mm -hmm. them games. You know, you drop down to Championship. It's hard to then get back up there as well. No matter how good you are, sometimes you'll never be able to get back up there. Um, but the way they sold it to me is they're going to give me a... Um, an open age contract, a full time contract at, at 15, 16 year old. And I thought I'll be playing against men, and I'll be I'll be fifteen, sixteen. Um, that that's that's actually better than going to a scholarship mm -hmm. at like a, a super league club, um, and and working your way up that way. I've I've jumped the I've jumped the academy bit, and I'll, I'll be playing against men. And then Luke Ro Luke Robinson rang me. Uh, he, he was the coach at Uddersfield at the time. Well, he was playing at Uddersfield at the time, but he were like, you know, well in there. He were, he were a um, captain, vice captain. He, you know, he had a he, he had a bit of pull mm. there at Uddersfield. And he says, "What's what's happened here, Cruz? What uh, what's uh, no?" The thing that that happened as well. The way I was thinking about me getting signed. All the other clubs, there's like a transfer window, like you love in football, mm -hmm. um, and all the other clubs. They, they send out a letter to the players that they think they can poach, they can get from other academies, they can sign. And they thought I were nailed on. War Warrington weren't going to let, let me go. So mm. so no offers come through. So I was like, wow, they, they were no, I've gone from, like say, playing for England, playing for my country, uh, to no offers at all. Um, left you sort of out. In the he open, he left know? me yeah, and a bit like, wow, what's going on here? So then I signed at uh, Uddersfield because uh, Rob or Luke Robinson said to me, you don't want to go down to the championship. It's very hard to get back into the Super League then, like we were saying. Um, and I was like, all right, I'll sign for the, the academy. I signed for Rudy's Fields Academy. Um, and then alongside that, they want you to get an education. It's not full time. You still train at like seven o'clock at night. Um, so you can still go and do a job or an education, you know, un until you sign a professional deal. And I think I'd been signed at Rudy's Fields for three or four months. And uh, I were at sixth form at the time and I was doing... <laughs> some awful course uh, I, can't, I can't remember what it was uh, I didn't like my teacher I can remember just sat in lesson thinking I don't, I don't yeah, want don't this be yeah, I don't yeah. want this anyway my phone starts ringing it's Paul Anderson he's the coach of the head uh, of the first team Okay. Um, and he's ringing me oh god what have I done here I'm in trouble <laughs> so I, answered, I, I went outside uh, I went outside my lesson I answered the phone I says uh, Baloo we called him Baloo then I says um, what's up he went um would you be interested in a first team deal? Uh, I says, yeah. He says, you'll have to quit uh, uh, sixth form or wherever I was. So, yeah. yeah. And I said, <laughs> I, I walked back in. Uh, I walked back in. I says, that, that this is my last day. And then walked out, signed my first team deal at 16. And then that were it. I mean, that's so, class. That. When Wallington <coughs> got in touch, was the plan to stay with them and go pro? Or was it like a scholarship thing? What they yeah, were well, he goes like, um, you have an academy. So from 17, 16, 17, 18, 19, there's an academy. Um, and then you're playing against other academies. So Odysfield right. will play Warrington, Warrington will play Wigan, yeah, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then from there, you end up either, oh, he's, he's killing it, he's killing it. Then you might go out on loan to a championship team because that is another step up because mm -hmm. you're playing against blokes. Yeah. And then you might be killing it in there and then you get a first team, you get a first team call up and they, you make your debut. Um, 
I went from the academy and made my debut at 17 um, against Warrington oh. <laughs> for Huddersfield. My debut were against Warrington for Huddersfield. It, 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 I was like, wow, you can't play well. Yeah, play well. Can't, yeah, I scored with my first touch Get of in. ball. Oh, um, have that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, were, it, were, it were mad, really. So I played um, against Warrington for my debut. Great day. Um, all my family came to watch. It, it, were, it were a good day. Obviously, mm. I scored as well. Um, so... That were a bit surreal for me, and it were a bit like how was how was everything aligned for me to play against them? But yeah, enjoyed it, and like I say, from then on at seventeen to make your debut at such a young age, it's yeah, it's um. So I start thinking I can make I can make mm. some I can do some here because I were ahead of probably the players that I'd come through with. Uh, all my mates had played rugby and signed from Siddles to Huddersfield. A lot of them, a lot of our teammates from Siddle had signed, and they were still in the academy. They were nowhere near getting a first team deal, um, and I was starting to make progress, quick progress. And I thought this is something that I can um, make a living out of. So it's just, go, sorry, I was go, just going to say it's mad to go from sixth form to then playing. Yeah, that's class that people, though. All the people at sixth form thinking, yeah. Where, well, where's Cruz? Why is he not showing up? Like, sorry, guys, I'm just playing at the weekend for <laughs> the 9,000 people. Do you know what I mean? It's a bit, yeah, yeah. Bit good. Just to backtrack a little bit, sorry, mate. Um, so this guy that Ashes play rugby for Siddle, did he think you were going to be any good or what? Like, Because you've got on to be a professional, you're the captain yeah. of the lead rhinos. Has he got an eye for it? Does he know how to turn golfers into rugby players or what? Yeah, he... Um, <laughs> He has signed a lot of players, to be honest. He signed so many uh, young lads. All my mates go... He's called Dilwyn Lewis, the guy who um, who got me to sign down at Siddle. And he has got a knack of getting people mm. to sign on and he won't take no for an answer. He'll always have something uh, against you, like with me with the golf. He had something that I, he, know I, he knew I needed that pitch to, mm. to practice on. So he pulled on them strings. He, and, and likewise, for a lot of other players that have played down at Siddle, he's done the same thing and got them playing and then we fall in love with it and... A lot, of, like I say, a lot of players have come through. Dilwyn Lewis down at Siddle, um, such a good guy, um, clever guy by the sound. Yeah, yeah m- mad into Siddle as a, as a team. Mm. He's, he's grown up with Siddle and he's he's got it in his heart, um, and he just loves to see him do well. So and he likes to to get the youth playing there. So Class. yeah, you need people like that. Don't I was going to say even at, like football local teams, mm. and they've always got like one bloke who just bleeds like that yeah. club. Don't like, yeah. Could be, yeah. like, the lowest league possible yeah. amateur football, but he just loves going yeah. to watch on a Saturday and then having Knows a beer after. Everybody yeah. there. Yeah, and it's class. Like I say, you need that. And then moving back to sort of <clears throat> when you got re- sort of released by Warrington, um, we almost feel like going in sixth form, I bet it felt sort of like when you were sat there thinking, did it put almost like a ro- rocket up, back up your ass again to be like, right, I need to make it here because I don't want to be doing this. Like, like you said, you said you hated the teach, you hated the lessons. Was that sort of like a, a point like, okay, right, now I need to properly go for my rugby and, and I know I can I can do it? Yeah, I feel like it just made it apparent to me how ruthless um, top-end sport mm. is. And, you know, whenever you feel like you're going really well, uh, the rug can just get pulled from underneath your feet. Yeah. And I've gone from, like I say, Playing for my country, representing them at an international level. We've, we've we toured France. We beat France over there, and I've come back. I've done my shoulder, um, and I've got. I had nothing, and I had to go sixth form. So, and that's probably a lesson that I've took into you know my life now, and uh, ever since that moment, it just makes it very clear that um, professional sport is a ruthless game mm. to be in. And one minute you feel like everything's going really well, and click of a fingers yeah. and then and then back um, down to earth, you're back yeah. down to earth and 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 the other way as well sometimes you feel like you're just plodding along just keep doing the right things you know uh, training really hard um eating well um staying away from drinking and you just keep doing that keep doing that and you feel you, you're going along notes really happening notes really happening, and then bang something falls into place for you just mm-hmm. just as quick as as uh, you're getting released something falls into place and then it's a snowball effect and a lot of good can come off the back of that as well was it just Huddersfield that came in for you or was there I know obviously Halifax did as well but was there any more that were sort of around the situation like the the champ, uh, the Super League sorry that were saying look we do want you but you're going to have to join the academy or was it just Huddersfield it, it that, was just Huddersfield at the time yeah just had one club and it, um, I'll th- I always I'll always thank Huddersfield for that because mm. obviously like I say I were in a bit of a tough position uh, obviously still really young um, so you've got you've got the world ahead of you but it, everything what's happening at that time no matter how young or old you are it seems like a massive thing to you at that time you know even if you're eight years old and uh, you know you, you, you leave something or you, you leave a court or whatever it's a big thing to mm. you at that age and for me at 17 I didn't look 
I wasn't looking, thinking, oh, I'm only 16, 17, I'll easily be able to find it. I was thinking, wow, this could be over for me. Um, so it were a massive thing for me. Almost them taking a chance on you, but to be fair, it seems like you've <coughs> paid them back no end. I mean, how long, how long were you at Huddersfield for then? So you started at 17, made your debut, and then you were at Huddersfield for, for sort of how long? Seven years. Was it? Seven, eight years, yeah. And just yeah, gone you've gone from there to being all, well, obviously you moved to Leeds Rhinos, but you must have been the best yeah, player on the field as well. At the time. Is that right? Did you go on loan from Huddersfield? Yeah, I went yeah. on loan to um to Oldham for three or four games. Right. Um at what age was that? That were I think eighteen. Right, okay. And then that's still young, isn't it? Like Yeah, it's right at the start of your career, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Um and like I say, because to to be seventeen year old even now, like to be seventeen year old, the game's too physical and too hard to be putting a seventeen year old yeah. in every week. Um, and they try and look after you in the fact of you know you're playing against blokes, um, you, you're underdeveloped, you, you, you're not you're not ready uh, physically yet, mm. not ready mentally to be playing week in week out. Um, so they try and look after you in in certain ways, and obviously the players that are in front of you are, are good players as well. You, you, I, I, funnily enough, the the position I t- took in the end were Luke Robinson's position, right, okay. the guy who got me to the club. Um, is that a, ho- is a, ho- a hooker? Hooker, yeah. yeah he, he, were, he were brilliant. Play. He played for England, um, you know, he, he played for Wigan, he played in finals. Uh, he, he were brilliant for me. He taught me so much about rugby and how unselfish he were mm. to get, one, get me to the club when he knows I play the same position as him. Two, the way he helped me and, and coached me, he, I, I learned so much of him. I, I dare to say I learned probably most of him I've ever learned of anybody in my career. Um, he was brilliant for me. Uh, and for him to do that, even knowing that I'm going to eventually take his position, he's just a selfless act and um, a massive shining light on his personality and who he is as a person. That's all he needed, just one sort of... Yeah, and he must have seen model. something in, in you as well, obviously, for him to almost take on yeah. that sort of figure of, right, I want to I want to help him. He's going to take my position at, at some point. Let's make him as, as good as I can. And quite clearly, yeah, like I say, it's always good to have someone that he, he, that's done there, been there, done that, got all the experience from it, and then you can get passed on. You feel like almost a sponge trying to soak up all the information that, that he's sort of, sort of saying to you. So from Huddersfield, you're there for seven years. And then the Leeds Rhinos come in for you. How does that, obviously you spoke about the transfer window a little bit. How does that sort of work? What was the sort of pull from Leeds Rhinos and what, how did they get in touch? Um, well, You're smiling here. What the, yeah, there's, <laughs> there's a story, uh, isn't yeah. there? Yeah, there's, um, there's always got, there's, you know, there's legal things to go. You can't approach a player within a certain amount of time right. and stuff like that. Um, so they've got to go through an agent and speak okay. to them and do it all the right channels and go through the right ways. And that's what happened. And, I wanted to leave the club. I, w- I wanted to leave Huddersfield, not because of anything they'd done. It's just, you'll get it in all walks of life. You'll get it in, you know, your job or whatever that you do. I, I felt like I'd become stagnant and stale. Mm. Um, Almost plateauing a little bit. Yeah, I was plateauing. Uh, that's a good word to use because it, it was like, no matter what, what job you're in, it, uh, eventually it becomes monotonous and it's yeah, the you same want new thing. Challenges you want a new challenge yeah. and I feel like, I'd rather I'd rather go and test myself and try and aim for something, you know. And I felt at the time, uh, and like now, it's the best decision I've made in my career to go to Leeds Rhinos. I've won a Challenge Cup. I've played in the Grand Final. Um, it, I was going to a bigger club. I wanted to win things. I wanted mm. to play in front of ten to twenty thousand people. Um, and at that time, Huddersfield weren't doing that, um, and they just won back to back trophies. And I, I got the opportunity to go, and I thought I'd, I'd look back and regret it if I didn't if I didn't make that if I didn't make that happen. So um, it's probably one of the best uh, career decisions I've made, and I'm happy with my happy with my decision. Is there a, a fee like a transfer fee like in football? So would they pay like I don't I don't know how much it would be in rugby. Like I say, we don't really know a lot. But is there a, a fee that comes with it in terms of the club has to pay to the club? Yeah, not always. Uh, it depends on what they negotiate. Okay. Um, but yeah, there was there were a fee. Right. Okay. Um, and then so you, you're at Leeds Rhino signing 2020. Is that right? 20 uh, sort of just before lockdown. Yeah. Was yeah. it? Was it? Um, and then obviously, like you say, you've you've gone on to win play at Wembley. What was sort of that experience like? I can. I mean, we like I say playing at Wembley for us too would be ridiculous. Yeah. So Got I can imagine. Dream, yeah, I can it. imagine that was unbelievable. It was. It was. It was something. More surreal for me because, like I say, I, I'd, I'd paraded that pitch as a young mm. lad and I'd gone round, I'd watched the Challenge Cup being played there um, and I was like, wow, like, I've, be, I've been here and I saw this. I, I, I knew, like, I, from the day I went uh, and, and paraded around there, uh, I said to the lads, I said, I'm going to play here one day. I don't know what's going to happen when I play here, but I'm going to play here one day. Um, 
and then for me to get there and think right I'm, I'm, I'm here this is it were a, it were a very surreal moment for that reason and the other reason where it were locked down as well so we had zero fans oh, oh was it we had no fans what were you yeah. thinking before that game like Obviously, you, you sort of full life's been building up to this moment. Are you are you nervous or what, what's what's going through your head? It's weird for me. Um, we nerves. I'm very nervous. Me when I play, very nervous. Uh, week in week out, I'm really nervous every time I, I, I take the field. Any big game I've played in, and grand final, uh, Challenge Cup final, Challenge Cup semi, Challenge Cup quarters, mm. uh, semi final to grand final, nothing, no nerves, really? nothing. I felt, I feel just like. I'm, I, 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 this is, I, I, it, it's, it's hard to explain, like, for me as well as a captain to go into a changing room and sometimes the week in, week out games, you're looking at um, your players and we're like, we on today, do you know, sort of thing. Mm. there's a little bit of chat, a little bit of laughter, um, you know, and I'm getting nervous because I'm mm. thinking, oh, is, is everybody on today? Whereas them big games, nobody needs to say out to anyone. Mm. Um, everyone, it's the biggest moment in everyone's life in that changing room. There's no, there's nothing I'm going to say that's going to get you mm. more up for game than what you already are already. Words do nothing at that. No, yeah. Exactly, and it's just an ultimate feeling of being prepared and ready for that moment. And everybody's going in there to give. They're all on that field today. There's no, there's not one player going to take a backward step today because of how much it means to everyone. And I think I just enjoy that feeling of yeah. walking into a changing room. Everyone's silent. Mm. You can hear a pin drop because, like I say, everyone. It's just so important to everyone. I love walking into that environment. Me, mm. um, vision. Were you were captain that day then at Wembley. Uh, no, I wasn't. No. no, I was for the grand final, not so, at Wembley. It's not bad though, is it? No, <laughs> listen, I, I was playing at Wembley and I was sat on the bench the whole game, I'd be buzzing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I've, I've actually warmed up on the Wembley pitch. Yeah. I'd be buzzing with that. I mean, that sort of shows your leadership though, um, because you almost, I, I can guarantee there'll be other lads in the change rooms that will be absolutely shitting themselves. Although they're all hyped up and you, your tunnel vision, you know you've got to win this game. This is what it's all come down to. With you being so calm and being a leader that, probably goes into your performance on the pitch and like you say that's probably why you have really good games in your finals because you're taking the leadership qualities onto the pitch in terms of in the change rooms are you quite like a loud guy like like riling people up? obviously not in the finals I know you've just said but in terms of like on a week-to-week -week basis are you like right come on lads let's fucking pull your finger out a little bit yeah I, I feel like I do talk a lot um I do like to get people up for it I need to learn as a, a leader I'm new when I first took over as being a captain, I never knew, I thought, oh, it's, you know, I'm just going to do what I'm doing. But there's a lot more goes into it than what you think mm -hmm. and a lot more different personalities that you've got to deal with. It's a different pressure, isn't it? I it's suppose. a different pressure. Um, sometimes when it's coming from me, it's not as a captain. And, and I say, come on, put, do something today. Mm -hmm. It's a bit like, when I'm saying it as a captain, sometimes the, the weight of the words is more. Mm -hmm. And I need to look at the different personalities and differentiate what means what to you and mm -hmm. what because I could say the exact same thing to you as I say to you mm -hmm. and it means a totally different thing different reaction. a different reaction uh, and that's the next bit of, uh, of my leadership that I need to get right is knowing the different personalities mm -hmm. and that's something that I struggled with at the start was I was treating everybody like I was talking to myself mm -hmm. and I'm somebody who if I'm doing something wrong you need to tell me don't fluff, fluff it up just say that is not good enough and I want you to do x y and z and that's probably how I were dealing with it um, Somewhat myself. like an arm around the shoulder, don't they? Uh, yeah, and I struggled with that to start yeah. with. As a leader, I struggled with because that's not how I learn, and that's mm -hmm. not how I'd, I'd want a leader to do it to me. Mm -hmm. um, but it's that's what ultimate leaders um, they have connections and um, the way of speaking to every different individual because everyone's different, and I think that's what makes the best leaders. And growing up, were you always sort of captain, or is it just something that's you've just fallen into it? Leeds Rhinos. Yeah, I've just fallen into it at Leeds Rhinos. I feel like we went through a transitional period where there was, um, you know, they lost a lot of leaders and probably fell into the role um, from playing well. I was playing well, at, you know, at the time and um, I just fell into the role. But growing up, I probably, I, I was never looked at as a captain. I was always an individual. I played individual sports. I was a golfer, mm -hmm. a snooker player. Um, badminton, love badminton, and our our, indiv our individuals are brought up with in individual mm -hmm. sports, so that's probably why I found it hard um, at the start uh, as a captain to uh, adjust. And it's not about how I feel, and you know, sometimes I might have to take a, a step back for two more people to flourish. 
Um, and that's better for the team than me flourishing and them two not playing so, so well. Because yeah. if one pl person's playing bad, we can carry them. Mm. If two or three are, it hurts the team. Mm. And sometimes it, it and, and I found it, I, I found that hard in, in leadership, uh, but I'm getting there. And uh, it has been something that I'm getting better at. I used to think you were either born a leader or you are. Mm. Um, and I don't think that's true anymore. No. I don't think that's true. I feel like good leaders can be can be made to be good they leaders. Adapt to situations. Uh, yeah, and adapt. Like that, and, and I feel like if you're honest with yourself and you can critique yourself, um, you can become you can become a really good leader from from not being a, a great leader in the How start. How is it appointed then? Is it the manager or is it like the team who decide? Because obviously it varies in football, doesn't mm. it? Sometimes it's a team who sort of pick the player or how yeah well it varies in rugby the way mine was decided was it were a voting system throughout the whole team and they mm. put number one number two number three mm. and the top guy got three points two points one point mm. and everyone did that and i got the most points but that made you feel class like knowing uh, that all your teammates respect you yeah, that much it. and see you as this person that can i think, lead I think us. if i were to choose a way to do it that'd be the best yeah. way because i, I the opinion of your peers means more mm, than the opinion of anyone else. And, and they're the lads you, you're taking the field with and they're the lads you're trying to uh, motivate. So if a coach has come in and says, you know, I've had you as a captain at another club or whatever, and you've not earned your, your stripes, your stripes there, yeah. and they say, right, you're my captain. Even though you might be a great captain at the start, you would have the self doubt of do the lads, uh, you know, respect me and uh, appreciate me being captain. And a hundred percent, some lads will probably look at him and think, "Fucking, who's this big time Charlie? He's just come in and now he's appointed captain. Like, how can that be right?" But like you say, being appointed by your your teammates must be uh, an unbelievable yeah. feeling. And and sort of obviously you were touching on you can learn to be a leader. Um, it, a, a lot of coaches. The man management is massive, which we were talking about. Is that something you can see yourself doing after rugby? Is it something like maybe, I don't know if you've looked at that far ahead, you're only 27, aren't you? So um, you've still got a few years, but uh, now you're becoming a leader and learning the skills more. Can you almost see yourself going on to a coaching role after and, and sort of doing what the, what was his name? An is it Anson Luke Anderson or something? Uh, Luke Robinson. Luke Robinson, sorry. Yeah, um, he, he's, he's gone on to coaching. He was a very smart player um, and then he, he went on to coaching and now he, he's, he's assistant at Uddersfield and he's doing really well. He's got a good career. I don't know if that's me. Mm. I don't know. Um, I'll, I'd never say never to coaching, but I... Um, it's very hard. He's coaching, and uh, they don't probably don't get the credit that they deserve. The days are just as long mm. as as any other day, um, and I feel like when I retire, I want to have enough money behind me, have enough, uh, you know, disposable income um, to go and enjoy my life mm. a little bit more. I've been very regimented in uh, the way I train, the way I eat, the way I prepare for games. Is some some players can get away with. Um, eating not so well and they just perform on, on a game day. It's everyone's individual, everyone's different. But every bad thing I do, if, if I don't eat the right things, I don't drink mm. enough water, it, it plays on my mind. And Routine, I, I, I like, like I say, when I'm nervous as it is going into games, um, I want to I want to have no stone unturned. Mm. So if anything, I have a bad game, I can turn around and go, well, I've done everything I possibly could. To, you know, there's no excuses there. It's out your hands as well, I guess, as a coach, isn't it? Like, if you're on the pitch, yeah. you can do something about you do, it. You As a coach, you just got to. You constantly want to get on the pitch, like, wouldn't you? The team are going to change things around, or yeah, you'd constantly want to be like, right, can I be subbed on here, or <laughs> <laughs> any chance I can get on? Yeah. You want to, you want to change the game, and like you say, I, I completely get the idea of you want to do your own thing after, because I can imagine team sport and playing at such a high level is so regimented. Like say, such a routine that you've missed out on a few things, and with your mates that aren't rugby players that maybe go on holidays and at this uh, a certain time when you can't because you're training. So um, it, I can imagine it's very frustrating. That actually I've missed, I've missed out on a lot of lads' holidays. Yeah, I I've bet you've missed you out on a lot. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah, through the summer we play through the summer going to a beefer for, and I've missed out on yeah. a lot. And uh, I feel like if I could just. Like I say, have the financial freedom when I retire to go play golf whenever I want. Mm. You know, that's that's the goal, and that's what I'll judge my career on being a successful career. Then because I've I've uh, made my money, um, I've come out of out of the sport, hopefully healthy, uh, and I and I've got the financial freedom mm. to go and do what I want when I want. And I think that's that's a sign for me as a, a, of a good career. I mean, mm. obviously, you just said you missed out on loads of lads all days. One thing I did want to ask you: what was the night out like after the Wembley game? Oh, you couldn't have, could you? Couldn't go it was out. Lockdown. Oh, of course, yeah. Oh, yeah. I was buzzing with that question. Was like, I was thinking it's going to give you a great story. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be sick. Oh, so, did you just have to all go home in that? Well, yeah, we. I bet uh, that was it was horrid. It, wasn't yeah, it? it won't great. It won't great. Uh, obviously, lockdown. Um, they put, I think they put some food on for us somewhere. Um, 
But yeah, lockdown, it, 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 it were horrible. Was this at the start of lockdown or at what point during COVID was it? Must have been when it was coming out a little bit. there was a time where everyone was like, oh, this is getting ridiculous yeah. now, isn't it? But at the start, everyone was quite on it, weren't they? Yeah, it must have been at a point Keeping where it was... When, when, when I, can't remember, I can't remember what stages we were yeah. in, but I know no nightclubs mm, were yeah. open. Um, That's, that's hard. heartbreak, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it wasn't nice. Oh, God, I out in London oh, no, after playing at Wembley. The one time, well, have you played at Wembley again? Or was that the only time no, you played at Wembley? that's the only and, time. And such a big game, you'd be thinking, oh, imagine the piss up here if we, yeah. if we win. But like, uh, listen, every sort of, like say, in, individual is different. Every career goes a certain way and that will happen for a certain reason. So They um, were... They were there were a silver lining in that because a couple of lads that um, I played with had won a Challenge Cup before. Okay. And um, they said, you know, the hustle and bustle around um, the media and you get dragged there, you get dragged there and everyone's going to see the family and they need to do mm. media duties, media duties, mm. media duties. Whereas because it was a uh, lockdown, we didn't straight have that. Up. And we, str- we, were, you know, we were straight in the, the changing room and we just sat around with a beer and we could just enjoy each yeah. other's company for a yeah. bit and nobody were getting dragged because there were no there were hardly any media there nobody yeah. could get into the changing rooms because yeah. of because of because of the rules so there were a silver lining a little bit yeah. in that was any family allowed to watch at all or were you like were you allowed like maybe in the in the box or anything like that or was it literally just an empty stadium no. almost that's horrible just directors they were just it? directors and, and and cameramen it were mad playing in that lockdown because week in week out like the commentators they used to play sound of a crowd for the spectators, yeah. but we want we wouldn't hear that. So oh. we could hear them shouting out right. names and, and commentating on the game. We could hear, oh, he's dropped, he's he's dropped it again. He's having a <laughs> shocker. Jesus Christ. So yeah, but we um so we could hear everything. It were it were it were a strange time. Okay, for it was everyone. a really weird yeah. time, wasn't it? It was. I mean, it was the same as football. No one could play. No one was watching no. it at football. But yeah. I feel like football was a little bit more lenient than maybe rugby was. I don't know if that's the case, but it seemed like the media was a lot more involved in in the football side of things. Mm-hmm. Was was the final televised? Was it still on TV? And that yeah, was yeah. it? Right, BBC. Okay. Yeah. Oh, right. Okay. So right, massive then still. Um. So obviously you've gone from the the is it the challenge? Is that the challenge cup? Challenge that's cup. The challenge cup. Right. So you've gone from the challenge cup, and then so that was twenty twenty. Have you uh, now sort of in the moment you are at the moment? Um. Have, am I right in saying you've just missed out? On the England squad is that yeah. right so yeah. uh, do you want to talk about that a little bit what, what sort of that involves yeah well I were in the the train on squad I played uh, last year we, we went to France and I, I made my England debut I got my first cap um, we played in France uh, I were having a good year um, I got injured I did my foot uh, that didn't help my chances mm. um, leading up to the World Cup and then I got pipped at the end by by two other players that play in my position uh, but yeah, it's it were a tough time, um, but every cloud, I, 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 I got to go to a beef on a lads holiday with the lads, uh, which we enjoyed. Um, so that that were nice normally, like you say, with the, the international duties, you don't get that chance that the closing parties are closed. And I got a chance to reflect on my season and it's given me a lot of fire this year for, mm. for, for what's to come. It's put a, a, yeah, it's put yeah. some fire in my belly and I just want to go under the radar, do my job and and hopefully, you know, prove a, prove a couple of people Were you wrong. half expecting not to get into this World Cup then because of the foot injury or was it? It was a tough one for me because everyone that I'd spoke to, again, it, it's hard because you're listening to out, outside noise, but it's hard not to when, you, mm. when you're involved in it. You know, you hear reports, you hear like murmurs and yeah. everyone had put me in the squad. Yeah. Um, so I, I have thought I was going to get in. Yeah. And then again, it was just this realisation like we were speaking about before of how ruthless sport mm. is. Yeah. Um, and you know you get an injury, you're out for eight weeks. You 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 not you're not on Sky. You've forgotten about a little bit, and then and then I thought I'd done enough in the grand final to get me in. Mm. Um, but yeah, uh, he, he, person that's making the decision is a human, and he's mm. got to go off what he believes is mm. right and best for the team at the time, which I've got no problem with. You know, it was just I I were unfortunate to to not get picked in in that squad. But like I say, it's given me a little bit of fire. So is the World Cup this? Is it this summer? Is it? Am I right in saying that, or is it already been? It's already been. Has that's it, what that were that right, were on. Yeah. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. So when you got told by the sort of did the manager ring you and tell you, or did you just find out the same way as almost like Sky Sports and it's just no, yeah, the, the manager right, rang okay. me. And what was that sort of call and how did I bet that was a hot, obviously a hard pill? To yeah, it was. It was, and it's, it's it's not a nice conversation for him to be making. It, uh, you know, it's not it's mm. not nice for him to be um, ringing up, and it's probably th- th- that's the conversations they least look forward to doing. Um, but yeah, he just rang me. He says, "Look, Cruz." He says, um, 
this is one of the toughest calls I've had to make. I feel like you've you've been unlucky not to get in. Um and I've gone with so and so and so and so and I says, Okay, no problem. I says, Go go and win it. Good luck to the lads and that. Um but yeah, that it were a tough one. You touched on the media then, Cruz. Is, is it something that you guys listen to or is it a case of sort of blocking that out and just focusing on yourself? Or? Yeah, I feel like it, you can go down a rabbit hole listening to media. Yeah. I think the the good and the bad. Mm, I think yeah. sometimes when you're playing well and you uh, you know uh, media has been been bulling you up and actually within the, the in the camp and you you know the little things that the fans don't see and the media don't mm. see you're not getting right and your teammates and your coach are actually not happy with you mm. but you're listening to this this outside noise and before you know it you end up not playing not getting in team you're thinking hey well, you, you know so and so said oh, I was killing it which we know we, you know we've got a better eye than than the fans mm. watching we know what we expect of each other and sometimes just because you score three or four tries you could have missed a load of tackles you, you know you're not tying in from inside you're not doing your job and that's what we we pride ourselves on so and the other way some the other way of you are doing all them things your teammates are loving you because you, you're mopping up for everyone mm. you, you, your coach is saying the best things in sliced bread because he, he he's seeing all these little things that you're doing but the media are portraying you as not playing that well and if you listen to that it's a lot of rubbish it's, it's rubbish sometimes so have, have you ever have you had any like bad rep from the media but in, in your career so far like is there anything that, that they've got on your back out uh, back about a little bit you know sort of like harry Maguire for uh, for man united for england that sort of thing or has it always sort of been from your point of view uh, more positive and, and things like that yeah i've got a good relationship with the media right. i feel like um I've done uh, I've done well c- coming through, and they've always been pra- you know v- very highly praising of me, um, and I've never had uh, any bad encounters with the media, and hopefully that that continues. Mm. But yeah, I can't I can't say that there's anything been bad put, put about me. Good. I mean, uh, I can imagine sort of being in the limelight all the time. You and can't put a foot wrong. Can you, you can't like going no, out like you mentioned going down like Greek Street, for example. You can't. Go out fighting or well, getting too <laughs> drunk. Yeah, yeah, that makes us sound like we go out now, green yeah. shit, scrapping every weekend. Yeah, no, <laughs> no, you know what I mean. Though. Yeah, there's consequences for there's you. Pe- there's there. eyes on you all the yeah. time without you even knowing there's eyes on you. When did you just touch on Ibiza? When did you go to Ibiza? Um, you said closing parties. End, yeah, when it, when it closing parties, it back end of September. We went back yeah, end of we September. Went. We went twenty first or the twenty fifth, something like yeah. that. We yeah. might have been there when we were there. I yeah. know. I can't. Um, I can't remember the exact dates, but I know that. Um, it were booked within an hour. Like uh, yeah. our, our, our sat at home. My mates were going. My mate had an, uh, his mate dropped out. A uh, couple of lads from Leeds were going, and within an hour, I were on the f- next flight. Man, that's that's like class. That, yeah. so that, that excitement was absolutely. Yeah. We, we were, we'd booked it for months. We yeah. were like, but the night before, we all Is that first time you've been. Yeah. We all, some so, place. Oh my god! Some I've place. been a few times, but it's first it's time you've gone. Absolute it? chaos. Yeah, it, is, uh, it don't feel like real life. I'm, I, I'm, it's I'm, paradise. I'm, isn't I, put it? An, <laughs> I put an Instagram post up and I said, "I don't feel like this place is real." Like, I didn't. Well, I got back and I felt like I hadn't been. Yeah, because it's just like not One everyone there has got so much money. Everyone's having the best time. There's that we didn't see any fights. Which yeah, yeah. We said, I said to you, I said it's because everyone goes because they just want to have a mint time. Yeah, yeah. Whereas like we say, when you are on Greek Street and stuff, there's just dickheads that yeah. want to scrap. Um, but yeah, I'd be. How many times have you been? Is that your That's own? my first time. Yeah. yeah. Um, I've like been the, the party just continues yeah. from morning to night, morning to night. How long did you go for? Five nights. Yeah, we went five. Long enough, nights. innit? Like, you don't need to be there longer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We I, I could have stayed there, no, five, me. Could you? Yeah. Oh, I loved that place. It is, it I is. I loved unbelievable. it. Yeah, we're unbelievable. We said, we'll, we'll have to go with you, yeah. 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 We said, we're going to go, I'll die death, I'm going to try and go at least two or three times this year. Well, that's the problem. Like, you can't, you can't yeah. catch. Normally, the season runs. Um, past September so we don't get the closing parties this time you know because of Covid mm. the season got brought forward a little bit and was that because of the World Cup as well and that was because of the World right. Cup as well had been moved to this year mm. uh, it meant to be last year and got moved to this year so we got a chance to go and I thought I can't pass this opportunity up yeah. nah yeah, I'm glad you, you couldn't I'm yeah. glad you didn't yeah. because I, we know how good it is and we've said on the podcast before we said we you can't do it justice. Like, you actually, it makes me smile this yeah, morning. Yeah, yeah. Just, just thinking about we're the memories. Sending, uh, yeah. Videos to each other. Yeah, we, we are. Like, when we're like sat at work or something, yeah. we like send a video. Oh, just, yeah. And then we lose track of what we're doing for about 15, 20 minutes. Think, shit, right. Yeah. I've, got, I've got to get back on it. Um, yeah. Cruz, I want to go back. There's probably a little bit of a, a different avenue that we spoke about so far. Um, originally, you're from, are you, is it Swaziland? Swaz- Swaziland, yeah. Swaziland. East Swatini, it's been, it's been, so it's been changed now. Right, yeah. okay. Um, so, ha- did you move? Were you born there? You moved over when you were really young. And am I right in saying you lost your dad? when you were really young as well so yeah. how, how old were you when that happened as well 
uh, eight, eight, right, okay, so I, I bet that was absolutely horrendous at, at that sort of age. Yeah, it was um strange time because obviously to lose a parent that was so in love like with me mm. and it, it took me everywhere, did everything with him. I was his first boy, uh, you know, first born. My mum were pregnant with my other sister at the time okay. as well, and he had he had throat cancer, and he was trying to hang on uh, to see to see his baby girl mm. being born. He didn't make it, um, and yeah, it's it's weird for me looking back on that experience because I think as as bad as it sounds, it's what made me who I am today, and I feel like that heartache and that pain that I went through, there's there's nothing that I, I could yeah. go through again, and for me to get over that. Uh, makes you feel like invincible. Yeah, you're a bit rock bottom there, in it. In yeah, that sort of position. So did that obviously? Have you got two sisters? Is that right? Yeah. And have you got any brothers, or is it just, just no, you? Just so did that ma- almost make you sort of feel like you have to become the, the kind of the man of the house. It's obviously eight, nine is is <laughs> mental to even comprehend for me. Um, but did that almost make you feel like you had to sort of step up a little bit? Yeah, and I feel like my mom. Um, I owe her so much of my success. I, I, I speak to my mom all the time, and I, and I tell I, I tell her I'm never shy in saying how much she's done for me, and mm. I wouldn't be nowhere near where I am today if it weren't for her. And the way that you know she's a strong African woman, my mom, and the, the way that she brought me up after my dad passed away was the biggest testament to her because I can remember another another young lad in my class at school lost his dad round about a similar mm. time. He started acting up and. Um, being rude to teachers, getting expelled, getting kicked out. Uh, and I tried I tried going down that route. And my mum just turned around and were like, there's no way you're... And obviously his excuse was, oh, my dad's just passed away. And his mum, you know, was not... I don't know if strong enough is the right way to put it, but to, to discipline him because mm. she were hurting as well. Mm. It, it's hard. Whereas my mum, she said, there's no way you're using your dad's name to disgrace uh, this family and, and let me let you get away with it. So I tried, you know, back chatting to teachers and my mum just was not having none of it. She nipped it in the bud early um, and it made me get over it and it made me um, be a decent person. Um, and I thank her so much for that mm-hmm. because she must have been hurting so much as well, you know, to lose her husband, to give give birth to, to another child with single parent, um, all in space of two months or whenever it was. Um for then for her to discipline me and not let me, you know, not neglect like looking after me in the in the sense of not um, not feeding me and stuff like that. I mean, in the in the fact of she still were on it with my mm. behaviour, whereas she could have quite easily turned a blind eye to stuff and and let me get away with, with uh, you know being being rude and, and stuff to teachers and she never did that and that's what made me who I am today, the person who I am and. Um, I'll never be able to thank her enough for that. Amazing that. I mean, that's yeah. testament to how strong of a, a woman your mum is. And almost, it probably helped you with your career today because it kept you on the straight and narrow because if you had gone off the, not off the rails, obviously, at school, but if you'd got, gone a little bit naughty, then it, it passes on to later on in life. There's yeah, lads I know at school. Yeah, it does, yeah. Same thing, innit? Yeah. There's lads I know in, at, at school that were shit and now they're, either behind bars or they're getting in trouble all the time they're doing something wrong so um yeah amazing from your from your mother and so is she that is she from swaziland i forgot what you call it yeah east swaziland yeah. swaziland she, she's from there um born and bred there um the way that my mom and dad met um is my dad were in the army and he uh he flipped a coin after coming out of the army and he was going to go to america or africa mm. um landed on it or whatever went to africa um and my mum was a croupier uh, in a, on a cruise ship. Okay. Uh, that's where I got my name. Um, oh, right. Okay. So, Class. Yeah, that's the so, right story. Yeah, that yeah, is. So yeah. she, she was a croupier on a cruise ship. So she worked on, uh, you know, dealing cards and stuff in the casino. And my dad joined um, and they met. Uh, I was conceived on the cruise ship. And then my dad always wanted uh, my name to be something to do with the boat because that's where he met my mom. Mm. That's where, you know, then he went to Swaziland and I was born in Swaziland back at my mom's home village. Um, and for very, for a very long time, I think I was going to be called anchor because uh, oh, of, yeah. of the boat yeah. anchor. Yeah. I'm glad that I'm glad that <laughs> yeah. I'm glad that I, I'm glad Cruiser that you got uh, a pretty easy nickname yeah. of wanker. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Very quickly. Exactly. <laughs> so uh, yeah, yeah, crew sounds good as well. So why the move to yeah. England then? And how well, my dad, my dad, my dad's English. Um, right. The opportunities in England uh, com- compared to Swaziland is, uh, you know, the world's mm. apart. And for me to get an English citizenship and um, a passport over here were massively beneficial mm. to me and my mom. Um, and the, like I say, the opportunities over here are far greater than the ones in, in Swaziland. So 
we come over here, but then we used to go back every year. Um, for, so I moved over here when I was three years old, and then four, five, six, we used to go back. And then when I signed my first professional deal at 16, um, the time off that you need to go there, it's like a 24 hour round trip. Um, and the family that's back there that you need to go and see, you need you need four, five, mm. six weeks, really, for it to make it worthwhile yeah. and to not miss anyone out and to not be rushing around your family. So when did you last go back? 15. 15? Oh, wow. Well, Maybe a bit earlier, 14. Yeah, mm. a while ago, that, yeah. Was it, Is there an airport there? How do, or do you have to get, like, a smaller plane? You fly, you're flying to Johannesburg, yeah. and then you drive down, because uh, oh, right, Swaziland okay. is... Um, this South Africa and then Swaziland. Swaziland's a landlocked monarchy on its own at the bottom. Uh, it's got its own king. Okay. Um, and that and you you, you drive through uh, um, South Africa and you get you drive into there. It's probably it's probably a similar trip from here to London. Right, about okay. four or five hours. Um, so yeah, that's how you get there. Yeah, it's a long trip. That so mm. you're right. You do need almost like to uh, exactly. To you've got a 24 hour flight and then you've got a four hour drive <laughs> to get there. Um, it's it's a it's a it's a tough travel, but like like I say, if you've got the time, it's worth it. Mm. I get to see my family. My mum, my mum's been back m- more times than me since since I signed a professional contract. I've not been back there. Uh, my mum still goes back ev- every year. Are all her side out there? Then? All the, all her family. What's yeah. it? What's that place like? Is it d- night and day to here, or what is it? Yeah, it's a, it's a th- it's a third world country. Yeah, yeah. Um, but again so fulfilling in going back mm. there and seeing my uh, my mates that I grew up with and how happy they are with very little what they've got um and the way that the the manners the very clean you know even even though they might have two tops to last them um you know that's all that's all they've got mm. they'll be washed uh, daily you know you, you see people over here that've got loads and loads of tops and never never got a clean top on uh, whereas they'll wash the tops all the time, you know, and uh, very clean man- manners. Um, they'll, you, you'll never hear them saying or oh, oh, back chatting to the to the mom or you, you know the dad. The the culture over there is is good, and I, I like going back. But it makes you appreciate sort of what you've got over here as well in terms of how different, like say, it's a third world country, the, the, the different lifestyle, the different everything you've got, your your, your availability, you know, especially somewhere like Leeds compared to. Swaziland in a ta- is it a tiny little village? Is that, yeah, well, is it? where I was born. Yeah, it's, it's so, a tiny it's a, Yeah, it's a completely different thing. But yeah. like I say, I bet very fulfilling and very sort it of is humbling as well. It makes yeah, you. it is. And to have been brought up there as well, and to go back and see the people that I've you know I, I was brought up with is is brilliant. And um, it is somewhere that when I have kids, I'll want them to see uh, mm. how uh, you know and, uh, the 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 way I've been brought up and. The way my mum's culture is, I think it's important for my kids to see that. Yeah, definitely. And listen, like I say, your mum sounds like an amazing woman and yeah. a class story of how your name came about and your mum and dad. So, uh, yeah, class. And I, like I say, I, I imagine it was horrible at the time, sort of losing your dad. But testament to you, testament to your mum of how sort of far you've come and uh, done in proud, blah, obviously, obviously representing Leeds Rhinos, representing England and, and, and yeah. doing doing as well as you have. So moving forward, Cruz, what sort of, uh, I mean, obviously now you're, you're off season, you like I say, you were training at the moment, but you're close back <coughs> to um, going back to the new season. Um, and then in terms of England, are you, are you almost more hungry to get back in that team now and, and like you say, prove a point? Yeah, I feel like any young English um, sports person wants to represent the country, mm. whether it be football, cricket, golf, um, rugby uh, and I'm no different to any of them I want to get back and and represent my country like I say I got one cap before and I loved it um it is the pinnacle of of our sport you know I'm representing my country um it, there's no higher honors that mm. you can get so I want to play against the best players in the world and and the best teams in the world and that's you know in test matches in world cups that's what you get a chance to see if you can mix it with the big boys and that's some of that I want to uh, definitely I want to want to do I feel like if I were playing the sport to just stay at a club level mm. it's it's not what you want it's not what you want you want to test yourself against the best every in my four opinion years in the world cup or is yeah, it, is, yeah, yeah same as football yeah yeah well I mean you said that like you said the reason you left Huddersfield was because you wanted to test yourself and go on and win things so shows your sort of ambition and, and what you're about as a as a leader and as a player which is again testament to you so I mean we touched on after rugby you said you want to just enjoy life is that is that sort of I know it's far away like I said it is probably five six seven years away yet ten, what is the sort ten, of is it, is it is it I was gonna say how well, long can you play till rugby well like, these, these, the pe- these people play until the four you know 38 yeah. 39 40 now so do you remember Ronaldo sort of situation yeah 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 um I'm 
I don't want to hang on. That's something that I don't want to do. I don't want to hang on. Uh, I want to be playing good rugby, mm. uh, and I want to be playing at the top, like I'm saying. Um, retire at the top. Re- retire at the top. Uh, that's what I want to do. Mm. Whether I do that or not is a different, um, a different thing altogether. But yeah, I don't. I don't want to hang on. Mm. I want to. I, then, I want to play at a high level. And then go on and. In- Play loads of golf, yeah. go all over the world, playing golf, Portugal. That's all. That sounds like a pretty good retirement. Sounds all right, doesn't it? Uh, only 30, so you'd be 37, wouldn't you, 10 yeah. years from now? So, so you still, if we're retiring at 37 and yeah, playing golf, I'm, I'm absolutely buzzing it, with yeah. that. Um, we'll, we'll nearly finish, Cruz. Um, uh, one thing that we ask sort of a guest just before we end it, um, if you've got one piece of advice that you could sort of tell your younger self um, from what you've learned as you've grown up, what would, what would that sort of bit of advice be? Bit of a thinker, this one. Mm, that's a good question. I've thrown it on you, so if you need a, a little bit of time to think, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say I'm a worrier, me. I wouldn't say that I am. You know, if I'm worried about anything, normally it's about rugby mm-hmm. or maybe my family. And if I'm ever worried, I'll just go. If it's rugby, I'll just go and train harder. So then these worries, is it, you know, I'm not going to be able to pass or is it my kicking or is it my tackle, is it my fitness? What am I worried about? And I'll get to the bottom of that and it might be my fitness. I'll go and run more, get mm. fitter, stop worrying about it. Um, if it's my family, it's a conversation, a tough conversation I have to have. Go get it done early and go do it. And I feel like that's the little bit of advice is one, don't worry too much. Mm-hmm. I, I'm not a big worrier anyway, but don't worry. Just go and just go and sort whatever problem you have. I, th- these tough conversations that the older I've got, I've started to have to have these tough conversations more because things are more complex and you're talking about different things. It might be money, it might be business, things that weren't in your life mm-hmm. when you were younger. Um, but... The longer I leave these tough conversations, the more I build them up in my head. I always feel better having, like, go and get it done. And having walked out of the room, having that tough conversation, the person that you have it with probably knows it's coming anyway. Mm. Um, And I always feel better having walked out of that room. So my little bit of advice for me would be don't worry too much. And whatever it is that's bothering you, go and sort it out straight away. Mm. Joe mentioned you've got, like, a support group. Is that right, Cruz, or something? Is that correct? A, a support group, as yeah. in... Well, you just said, mention the support group you've got. Well, well, I think what he's on about there is my mates. Like, right, okay. my, my mates are a very tight-knit group of yeah. friends. Um, they've grown up with me. Uh, they've been with me since I've, uh, I've been 10, 11 year old. Mm. Some of them play rugby, some of them don't. Um, but there's a lot of trust that goes into, um, yeah. the you know, my mates and the ones that... Are so honest with me and they can tell me you know they, they don't see me or put me on a pedestal like mm. anybody else um if i'm doing something wrong they'll say that's wrong we don't yeah. agree with you that keep you quite a small circle then very apparently. small yeah, yeah very small circle and i, I don't feel like I, I you know I, I go through life and that's probably an, another way of you know sometimes i come across some people say i come across a little bit cold or whatever it's not that. It's just I don't feel like I need to make too many mates. Me, I've got I've got my support group. I like you say I've got my friends. I've got my mom. I've got my family. I, I've got every avenue. If I ever need anything, I can go and speak to these people. Mm-hmm. All of them g- give me something different. They give me a different outlook on it. Um, they all bring something different to the party, as well as me bringing something to the party for them as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so sometimes people say, you know, I, I don't want to make too many friends. It's not that. It's just I'm not lucky. If if if, if, if I do end up making friends, I'll never say, oh no, I can't, I've got enough. It's never that. It's they just, just I'm not act- something to your life. Yeah, I'm yeah, just not mean. actively looking mm. to make more friends because I've got my I've got my tight group that I know I can trust that are there for me all the time and. Um, that like I said, they're honest with me as well. And sometimes I can be saying stuff or doing stuff that are out of order, and they say, oh, no, you know, if my mom's not there to see it or. Sometimes you go in different places with different people. They look after me for one and two. They'll say, like, we don't agree with that. You need to stop Keep doing Keep you grounded. That. Yeah. That's what you want. That's all you need, isn't it? It is, yeah. Small I was going to say, if one of us is being a knob, we'll tell each other. Yeah. Uh, a, a lot of times it's me telling you because you're a bit of a prick. But, <laughs> 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 but Cruz, though, listen, thank you so much for coming, fella. No um, a really interesting chat. A bit yeah. of a different one because, like yeah. I say, we don't know much about Enlightened. Rugby. Enlightened, yeah. definitely. Um, and, yeah, I've really enjoyed every single bit of it. So, guys, if, you, if you've enjoyed the podcast, obviously make sure to, to like the YouTube video, share it uh, the usual stuff that we ask for and um, we'll put Cruz's socials on screen now as well so make sure to go and check out Cruz on Instagram you got Twitter yeah we'll put your Twitter on there as well um, and yeah like I say if you've enjoyed it let us know drop a comment subscribe if you're new around here thank you very much for watching guys thank, thank you yourselves and uh, we'll see you next week 
Sweet. Cruise. Spot on, mate.